The buying and selling of lubricants has always been an extremely complex process. Some industrial manufacturing or even mining sites might have to evaluate tens or even hundreds of different products, which means pricing tens or even hundreds of products. To me, it's always seemed needlessly complex. And in this video, I'm going to give you three really good reasons why I think subscription is the way of the future when it comes to selling and purchasing industrial lubricants. When I used to work at one of the majors, one of my biggest frustrations was actually how long the sales cycle took. Typically for industrial, between making contact and actually making a sale, it would take anywhere between six and 12 months. But I had, in one case, a sales cycle that lasted six years. The reasons for this make a lot of sense. A lot of industrial companies are typically very conservative with their equipment. And if they understand how important lubricant is to the reliability of the equipment, then they don't want to make any rash decisions and they don't want to change. The other problem that you're always trying to overcome is that when you're selling a usually a premium product, it usually means a price increase. So you're having to convince a business to spend more money up front. This has always been a challenge in something like mining or oil and gas or the chemicals industry or general manufacturing, where you're trying to convince someone to spend more money now so that they can save more money later. So how does this work in practice? Now let's say I've got a site with 10 engines. They've got extended sumps of about a thousand liters each. These are stationary diesel generators and they operate for about 10,000 hours per year. Now I know there are already smart Alex in the comments section who are about to type out that there aren't 10,000 hours in a year. There's only about 8,000. I get it. I'm just trying to make the numbers nice and round. All right. So the way that this would work is let's say you have a 5,000 hour oil interval. That means you're doing two changes per year. And the unit oil cost in this case is $4 per litre. Well, if that's the case, then it's pretty obvious what your total oil cost is. It's just multiplying the sum size by the number of changes, by the number of engines, by the unit oil cost, and that gets you to $80,000 per year. Now, of course, there are other costs that are associated with oil changes, like filter changes, cost of labour, the fact that you've got to actually have some downtime, so which means loss of production, in this case, loss of production of power, as well as waste oil costs, right? Every time you change oil, you've got to do something with the oil. So that gives you a total oil cost of about $106,000. Now let's say, for example, I'm trying to upsell that business. I'm trying to put them onto what I perceive to be a better product that's going to last longer. Here is the biggest problem. The biggest hurdle that we always face is that we have to increase the cost of the lubricant. Most of the time you're selling a premium product and you're going from $4 a litre to $6 per litre. That's a 50% increase. Now the benefit that you get is that you probably get to reduce the number of oil changes. So let's say that the oil lasts 10,000 hours. Well now it's easy to calculate out everything else and the total oil cost when you multiply everything out is $60,000 per year. So theoretically, that's a $20,000 a year saving. Once you calculate all the other costs, they also reduce because you're doing less oil changes. And it means that the total cost comes out to around $73,000. If we put this in percentage terms, what we get is a relative total saving of about 31.1%. So that's a significant saving for this particular power plant. Here's the biggest problem. The cost on a unit basis has increased by 50%. And that's always the challenge when we're selling lubricants. The biggest problem is that you're having to trade a upfront cost increase for a theoretical saving in the future. So all of these numbers that I'm about to highlight here, these are all in the future. These are all theoretical. So the customer, the power plant, they are the ones who are having to take the risk they are paying more upfront for some perceived theoretical benefit in the future. And this is the biggest problem with the current model. What that means in practice is that the number which gets focused on is the dollar per litre cost. $4 per litre versus $6 per litre. And if you know purchasing offices, you'll know that that doesn't fly. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of legwork to prove that that cost increase is gonna be worth it. Often what you'll have to do is you'll have to supply some trial product. That'll involve engineers. They need to get involved. You'll need to agree to criteria. And then potentially after six months or 12 months, then you might eventually win the business. In the meantime, your competitor who already has the business can just drop their costs and nullify any benefit that you would have to the business. 
So this is the challenge that we're always trying to work around. So what if there was a way to, rather than having to increase the cost of the lubricant, right off the bat, we could deliver a saving from day one. The way to do this is simply to delete the cost per liter. So no longer are we gonna be selling anything for a dollar per liter amount. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to that total oil cost. So we're gonna calculate. They currently spend $80,000 per liter on oil. And what we're gonna do is we are simply going to reduce that by $10,000 straight off the bat and deliver that upfront saving. So $80,000 down to $70,000 is a 12.5% saving. So this is the number one benefit of the subscription model. It takes the risk away from the customer and it gives them an immediate guaranteed upfront saving. Now, of course, because we've adjusted the total cost from 60 up to $70,000, that means that we're gonna to have to revise some of the other numbers. So the total cost goes up a little bit and the relative total savings go down. But it's still at 21.7%, that's still quite a large saving for the customer. Now, how does this actually mechanically work? So how do we deliver the savings to the customer? So what's gonna happen is that in the first year, let's say you haven't extended the oil interval yet. You're still working on the previous oil drain where you're doing two oil changes per year. So what's gonna happen is that the oil supplier is really gonna to have to wear that cost. But here's what happens. Look at the total savings. The oil cost change stays the same for the customer. They still continue to save that 12.5%. However, because they haven't extended their oil drain interval in the first year, the total savings remain relatively low at 9.4%. And this is the incentive for them to extend the oil drain, even though they're getting already a cheaper cost, is that by extending the oil drain, they can realize other savings that are associated with filter, labor, loss of revenue, and waste oil costs. That means it's in the incentive of both the oil supplier as well as the oil purchaser to work on extending the oil drain to maximize the savings for both parties. So it really aligns all the KPIs. Now what you get in year two is the full realization of the total savings, which brings you to that 21.7%. Now, when I said that in year one, the oil supplier is gonna be the one that wears the cost, it's because if you calculated out the theoretical cost that they're selling at, it's about $3.50 per liter. But here's the major second benefit of why the subscription model is so good, is because in the second year, and for every year of the contract thereafter, they are actually rewarded for giving that upfront price decrease, right? So now, remember, originally we were gonna sell this for $6 per liter, that was the premium upsell. Now, in this model, you're actually able to sell for $7 per liter and you're rewarded with more margin for giving those upfront savings. So that's the second reason, is that we can actually use this as a way to incentivize selling higher quality products for more margin. Now, I know what you're gonna say, Rafe, this only works because you've got a very simplified scenario. They've got one engine type. There's only one type of oil. This is not a real world scenario. And yes, what I provided is a simplified scenario, but it's only to simplify the maths. The reality is that this works for even more complex operations. So if you had, for example, a fleet of trucks, which required a couple of different types of engine oil, as well as a couple of different types of gear oil, this calculation still works. And in fact, that brings me to advantage number three, is if that you are the incumbent oil supplier and you are supplying on a dollar per year basis rather than a dollar per liter basis, it removes the capacity for the competition to undercut you on price. Typically what happens is, let's say I'm selling engine oil, if a competitor wanted to get an in with my customer, they'll usually undercut me just on one product because that's the simple way of doing it. They might have a very cheap hydraulic oil or a gear oil. They get in with the customer and they kind of white ant you, right? They start with one product and then they eventually move into the rest of the range. Well, in this instance, none of the products have prices, right? You are selling everything on a per year basis. And therefore, if someone wants to win the business off of you, they have to undercut your complete offer. So that's the third major advantage. Now, if you do happen to, to want to know the details of it, get in touch because I've actually got formulas for calculating even the theoretical prices that all the products are sold at. So you could have a price list that is you know, 100 products long and you can actually calculate out the theoretical price 
for maybe internal allocation purposes or planning and budgeting purposes. So if that's something that you're interested in, get in touch. But I really think that this is potentially the way of the future, where not only would oil be charged on maybe a dollar per time basis, but even maybe a dollar per unit basis. So for example, um, through the use of sensors, you could charge oil uh, per unit of earth moved or per unit hours of uptime. It would involve a little bit more complexity, but I really think that this is the way of the future.